In this video, we look at the problem of finding the work done when we're trying to pump a fluid such as water out of some tank. Um, so the general question here is that suppose we have a fluid such as water with density rho that's being pumped out of a tank to a height h above the bottom of the tank. We want to determine how much work is required assuming that the tank that we have is full of water. So we want to think about how to set this up for this general case and then later we'll look at some examples where we apply the formula. So first we want to start out with a picture of some sort of tank that we might have. So here's a picture of a potential tank. Let's say our tank looks like this. Um, and let's put some labels on this here. Let's say that my tank has fluid here that goes from some level, we'll just call this A here, up to the top here. Let's say it goes up to level B. And let's say that we're pumping the water up to some height h. So in some cases it may be that h and b are the same, that you're just pumping the water up to the very top of the tank and then it goes out. And sometimes you may have some kind of outflow pipe that um, goes to a height that's a little bit above the very top of the tank. So we'll say in general up to some height h that we're trying to um, pump our water up to. So this y equals h here is what we're going to call the outflow level. Okay, and then we have um, from A to B here is where all of our fluid is, whatever that fluid may be. So how are we going to determine the amount of work here needed to empty our tank? Well, we're going to use the same sort of thing that we've been using in all of these different kinds of problems. Instead of an answering the question all at once about the work to get all of this water um, out of this tank, I'm going to think about lifting slices of water out of the tank and find the work to lift each slice. So we want to find the work to lift a slice of water out of the tank. So how are we going to do that slicing? Well, I'm thinking about this being my y-axis here. I'm slicing into this and I have some, some slice of water. In this particular case, my slice looks something, something like this. Okay, it's a, a disc kind of slice for this um, sample example here. But the idea is I'm going to divide my uh, interval here where the fluid is, my interval AB, into n subintervals, okay, which will then slice the water, thinking about slicing our water here, into n horizontal layers that are each delta y thick. So we have this thickness here. Um, For the thickness of my slice. So into n horizontal layers, each delta y thick. Okay. So what is the work then to lift the ith slice here to the level y equals h? Okay. So the work to lift that i slice is going to come down to um, our force times distance, right? So we know that force is this mass times acceleration times distance. Okay, so what's the mass that we have here? Well, what's the mass of a particular slice? Well, we have some density information. So we know that the density rho is going to be something like some kind of kilograms per cubic meter. And I'd have to multiply that times volume to get mass. So what's the volume of a slice? Well, you're going to have some sort of cross-section when you slice into this, this tank horizontally. So you're going to have a cross-sectional area at that particular um, height that you're at. So we have some interval here from yi minus 1 to yi. We have our sample point. So we have a of yi star, which is representing our cross-sectional area. So this is the cross-section or cross-sectional area 
of the i slice. Okay, in this example, it looks like that area is going to come from the area of a circle, but in general, we're going to have some sort of formula for the cross-sectional area. Notice that that would have um, two-dimensional units, something like meters squared. So if I multiply that times delta y, okay, now that's giving me volume units. So this is my volume here. The volume times the density, now that's giving me mass. So that volume times the density. Um, is giving me my mass. So now I can multiply that times my acceleration. Now I have force. And then the distance that that slice has to travel is going to be that distance of h minus yi star. So I have h minus yi star here. Okay. So we see that if I took a limit of a, of a sum of all of those things, I would have um, that being equal to here a definite integral from a to b of my density here times g, okay, that's rho times g, times my cross-sectional area, a of y, times the distance that I have to travel, which here is this h minus y, and then I would have my dy. Okay, so remember the bounds here are corresponding to the actual um, fluid, where the fluid starts and stops here, it goes all the way from A to B because I have a full tank, but that could change in a particular problem, so that's the bounds of whatever your, your fluid is. We have the cross-sectional area, A of Y, times the dy, that's our volume. The volume times the, the density is giving us our mass. Then I have G for the acceleration and H minus Y for the, the distance here. So that's the distance. All of these pieces here are contributing the mass component, and then of course I have g for my acceleration. Okay, so you can look at the next example to see how we use this in a particular case.